this sofa is low. <laughs> I should have practiced, like, the sitting on the sofa. <laughs> you have a sofa, don't you? <laughs> you really are busy. <laughs> I have a sofa. I haven't sat on the sofa for a while. Okay. Oh, dandy. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ian Sutherland, Dean of the School of Music here at Memorial University. We're delighted to have all of you uh, auditionees here in the room with us and many joining us via live stream uh, through YouTube. Uh, this evening we're going to talk about what it will be like for you to audition, what it's like to be uh, getting to know the school and so on. And joining me I have a number of uh, the wonderful faculty members here from the school. I have Dr. Michelle Sheremy who's a flute professor, Dr. Karen Bomer who does low brass, uh, Dr. Vernon Regeer, cello and orchestra conductor, and Dr. Carolyn Schiller voice, soprano, and uh, runs the opera stuff here at Memorial. So I'm going to kick things off first with a short presentation that's just going to overview some of the uh, pragmatics and details about uh, the audition days and the, the various locations. So people joining us by the live stream, if you're auditioning in Toronto or Halifax, I'll make some reference to those audition sites as well. Uh, I'm then going to turn it over to each of my colleagues who are going to say a few words about uh, auditioning and entering the school and that kind of thing. And then it'll be over to you guys to ask whatever questions you have. If you're joining us via the live stream, uh, you can send us your uh, questions uh, through the net, and we'll have them answered as much as we possibly can here in this forum. So let me begin. Auditions uh, are taking place starting next week. So the first auditions are on Wednesday of next week, which is February the 20th. They're taking place in Toronto. Uh, auditions will then happen in Halifax on the 22nd, which is the Friday and then the following weekend here in St. John's on March the 2nd. In Toronto, the auditions are happening downtown Toronto at St. Michael's Choir School, and there's a lovely picture of St. Michael's Choir School there. Uh, if you're auditioning for us there, uh, show up uh, half an hour, an hour or so before your audition time, come to the building, go through that main door that you see pictured there, uh, and you'll find a sign-in or check-in desk uh, inside the building and there'll be a warm-up room for you and then the auditions will be happening in the main auditorium. So auditions are happening between 10 and 4 uh, at uh, the St. Michael's Choir School on the 20th. Uh, if you're auditioning there, in addition to your playing or singing audition, we will also be doing your sight singing uh, test during your audition, uh, if you were wondering when that was going to happen. And we want to remind you that uh, if you're bringing, well, to bring scores of music, particularly for the jury panel, uh, when you're bringing scores, make sure you're bringing original copies for us. Similar situation with Halifax. So the Halifax auditions, as I said, are taking place on Friday, February the 22nd, which is uh, just over a week away. And uh, they're taking place at the Conservatory, the Maritime Conservatory in Halifax, which is on Shabukta Road. Uh, the auditions are going to be starting at 9 a.m., so a little bit earlier in Halifax, wrapping up at 1. Again, same thing. Sight singing will happen during your audition time if you're auditioning in Halifax. Again, a reminder to bring your original scores. And in both locations, of course, you will be uh, receiving some swag from Memorial University, so you can have a T-shirt and things like that. Okay, uh, here in St. John's, so this is about two weeks away, a little over two weeks away. Things actually start on March the 1st here in St. John's. So March the 1st is the Friday. The auditions are happening on the Saturday, the 2nd. But on March the 1st, we call that Shadow Day because there's a lot of things you can do during that day to help you get to know the school better, uh, to get to know some of the students here, the faculty here better, uh, as well as do some interesting learning and, and fun things. So we start at 9.30 a.m., um, we're going to get together in the lobby of the D.F. Cook Recital Hall. We're in the Suncor Energy Hall right now, but we'll meet in the lobby of the D.F. Cook Hall, the other concert hall in the school, uh, at 9.30. Now, that's, that's early for Friday, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, there will be tea, coffee, juice, some pastries, things like that, a, light, a little light breakfast at 9.30. Starting at 10 o'clock, you will have the opportunity to shadow an existing student. So uh, you need to register to do this, so send us an email uh, to musicauditions at mun.ca uh, to register for the shadow day, but you'll be then matched with an existing student, and you'll spend about four hours with that student between 10 and 2. 
During that time, you'll do everything that that student does. So if that student has uh, an opera rehearsal, you'll go to the opera rehearsal. If they have a theory class, you'll go to the theory class. If they have a lesson, you'll go to the lesson. If they have a master class, you'll go to the master class. Whatever that student is doing between those hours, you'll, you'll do with them. Uh, and of course, that's an opportunity for you to ask questions of them. What was the audition experience like for them when they, when they did it? What's music school like? What are their favorite courses? What professors do they really, really like or not? Uh, those kinds of things, yeah. You get the gossip from them, basically. Uh, then uh, at 2 o'clock, that'll finish up. We will have some food available for you as well uh, at lunchtime during that period. At 3 o'clock, Dr. Karen Bomer, who's sitting here with a lovely shawl on, uh, she will be doing a movement class in uh, the Cook Lobby, and maybe you'll say a few words about that uh, afterwards. Uh, at 4 o'clock, if you would like to have a campus tour, uh, you will, that will also be available. So that will be a tour of the rest of Memorial University. So you'll see the University Center, the QE2 Library, uh, the Munnell system, the tunnels that connect all the buildings and all that kind of stuff. Um, at 5.30, we're going to feed you again. So there'll be a dinner. And this is particularly uh, for, for yourselves as auditionees, but also your uh, guardian's parents, whoever may be joining you. So uh, there'll be some food at 5.30. At about quarter past uh, six or 6.30, I'll do a presentation, uh, particularly for uh, parents. Uh, of course, all auditionees are, are welcome to come to that and encouraged to come. Uh, but it'll be a, an information session for you and uh, parents and guardians. Then finally, at 7.30, there is the faculty gala concert. And that will take place in the DF Cook Recital Hall. As auditionees, you get free tickets uh, for that, of course. The gala concert is a great evening to hear many of the faculty as well as some students from the school. And it's an evening of uh, mixed fare, I would say. So there will be some wonderful uh, serious art music and there will also be some uh, comic uh, performances and so on. It's an evening where we really have fun and want to welcome you uh, into the school's family in, in the sense of, uh, of making wonderful music together. Then it's audition day, so that's the first, the shadow day. Again, if you haven't already told us you'd like to take part in that, do let us know. That's a great day. On the second, the Saturday, the, this is the day where, where you shine for us, as it were. Uh, again, we will feed you. There's a lot of food, coffee, tea <laughs> involved in this. Um, so, so from the very early part of the morning, 8.30, 8, 8.30, there will be tea, coffee, drinks, uh, non-alcoholic drinks, <laughs> uh, juices, and so on available for you. And that will be available actually throughout the day. So there will be refreshments for you throughout the day. When you arrive that morning or later in the day, if your audition and stuff is in the afternoon, uh, you'll find a check-in desk in the DF Cook Recital Hall lobby. So that's the first place. When you come into the school, go to the check-in desk. Uh, we'll double check with you that you're, you've got your, the right schedule, answer any questions you have. Again, the refreshments will be there. There'll also be uh, several information booths from Student Life and so on set up for you in the Cook Lobby. Uh, auditions start at 9 in the morning and they run right through the day uh, until at least 6 p.m. That, uh, that evening. During the day, uh, you will also have sight singing exams. So those will be scheduled one-on-one -on -one exams. You will also have theory placement exams. The first exam will be at 10, the second exam will be at 1.30. You'll be slotted in one of those two. Uh, for those that might be joining via a live stream that are auditioning in Halifax or Toronto, uh, theory placement exams and piano proficiency exams will not be done on the, at those locations. Should you be successful in admission to the school, uh, we will administer a theory placement exam and a piano proficiency exam for you. Uh, on the first day or during the first week of classes in September. Uh, so for here, piano proficiency exams will be taking place between 10 and 1. Again, those will be was scheduled on a one-on-one -on -one basis. You'll also have the opportunity to hear more about the music education program, so the Bachelor of Music Education second degree program. And Dr. David Bewley uh, from the Faculty of Education will be doing an information session at 11 a.m. on the 2nd of March. Uh, and again, to remind you, uh, bringing scores for the audition panel, make sure you're bringing original copies. And uh, swag will also, of course, be provided here in St. John's. That's it from my side. Um, so we'll move to a Q&A session, but I'll ask each of my colleagues to say a few words from, from their perspective 
Uh, we'll go sort of one by one. They'll speak for a couple of minutes, and then we'll open it up for questions. And I think Dr. Regeer, our cello orchestra guy, is going to start it off. Um, I thought I would just start with, with, with sort of where things all begin on that Saturday morning. If you're, if you're going to be here, um, uh, you, you can certainly tell from Dr. Sutherland's presentation that we really, we really want to try to get to know you and, and, let, uh, and let you sort of get to know us a little bit. And, and, and even on the audition day, um, the, the, the current students, they don't all disappear into their practice rooms. It's not going to be some, some very sterile envi environment. And that, that's something uh, that I think is really important to know, that, that you'll be welcomed here. People will be there to, to answer any questions that may come up. Uh, just in that moment, something you may not have thought about the day before. Um, uh, of course, Dr. Sutherland will be there. Faculty will be walking around. We'll all have uh, name tags on. And uh, I, th I think it's really something that I really um, admire about uh, my colleagues here is we, we really do, um, we really do want to make this a very, I mean, I, I know it's going to be a somewhat of an anxious experience. You're, you're here in auditioning and wanting to perform your best. Um, but we really, truly want to help you uh, achieve that. And, and, and it's the little things, I think, that that, that you'll find uh, when you get here, if it's refreshments or if it's just a friendly face showing you where to go, taking you there, not just saying, oh, just, you know, go over there. Um, we've heard from, from students in various places uh, around that they, they have, they've talked about not, not feeling particularly welcomed or particularly, I don't know if cared for is the right word, but, um, but uh, I think that makes a big difference. And, and you really will have that experience here. Um, and uh, so anyway, I'll just uh, fast forward a little bit. So when you're, when you're actually in your audition, you'll, of course, see the, 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 you know, a, a potential teacher. If you're a, a singer, you'll see, uh, you know, the three, I guess just the three um, yeah. singers. Just, just so you know. Anyway, but do, you'll, have a, you'll also have an opportunity to ask some questions after you've done your performance and that sort of thing. So if I have another minute, I'll just uh, steer in another direction uh, as well. I think one piece of advice I would give um, just about, um, about your, your sort of sense of confidence about your own playing is there's, there's nothing that takes the place of um, amazing preparedness. Um, I think when we feel like we're ready for that exam or ready for that, you know, whether it's a, 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 an academic one in, yeah, at school or, or, a, or a performance, if we really know we've, we've, we've gone that extra mile, I think that helps us feel uh, sort of the most at ease that we can. And so I just I want to stress for you to, to take advantage of, you know, play for your parents, play for your friend, like run your program for people. Um, get an opportunity to real feel, really feel like you've, um, really feel like you own the, the music and then you can walk in with lots of confidence. I'll leave it there. Dr. Schiller. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I think I was going to speak a little bit about the day and just what you can expect and just a few suggestions for the day. I think as much as possible, I mean, you'll be here for much of the day anyway. You have various and sundry tests throughout the day. But my suggestion would be to try and make it um, in terms of your own practice and just taking a little bit of time for yourself as, as normal a day as you possibly can. Um, for the audition itself, uh, when, you, when you're getting ready for your audition time, my suggestion would be to check in here. This is Suncor, so this is where we'll be auditioning the voice of the singers. It's a beautiful space to sing in, an amazing acoustic. You don't have to worry about making sound in here at all, and I would suggest any singers in the room, uh, before you leave, have a little sing, just make a few notes so that you get a sense of what the hall sounds like. Um, but what I would suggest is checking in with the desk here in front of Suncor. There will be some lovely folks there with your names, just to make sure that we're on time and we're not a little ahead or a little behind, and then go and warm up. Spend a little bit of time in the practice room, make sure you're comfortable with your own singing, but um, avoid the urge to over sing and leave all of your best singing somewhere where no one got to hear it. So, you know, I would echo with what Dr. Regeer said in terms of being prepared, warm up well. Um, where if you're a woman, wear, or if, I guess if you like to sing in heels, um, make sure that they're heels you're comfortable in. Uh, whatever you're wearing is something you're comfortable singing in. The voice faculty, we love that you bring your scores, but truthfully, we never look at them. 
So we just don't. And uh, you know, so you end up leaving them in a pile. So I think I could safely say, feel free to not. Please make sure your pianist has scores. They would really appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, for us, don't feel that it's something that's necessary. But what I will say is that really the goal for us is to hear you and to watch you perform and, and do something that you really love doing. Um, you are going to be listened to by a group of people who want you to succeed. So they aren't sitting there waiting for you to do something wrong. And this is the same for all of my colleagues. We are really excited to hear your very best. So please try and enjoy the day because we will all be really enjoying listening to you. Thanks. Thank you. Dr. Boomer. Yeah, I, I want to echo what my colleagues have said, that we are, so it never really gets old for us, yeah. that we love hearing you, we love meeting you, so, and we really, um, yeah, we, we really want to see you succeed, so, um, yeah, so come in with that, knowing that you're very welcomed, and we, we really want to support you. Um, a couple of practical things for audition day. So as Dr. Sutherland mentioned, I'm going to be doing a session on shadow day at, I think, 3 p.m., which is going to be some, like, body preparation and a few exercises that you can do to just sort of steady your nerves during auditions if you, if you tend to be nervous. So if you want to come check that out, um, you can. But on that sort of mental preparation side for your audition, if you are nervous for your audition this is a great sign. So don't feel bad. You're not doing it wrong if you're nervous. What that the nerves are telling you is that this is a big deal, that this is important. This is something you worked really hard for. So um, that's not a bad sign if you're feeling that way. It's showing you that's, that it's important. But there are a couple of really practical things that you can maybe do that might help you uh, feel a bit calmer on the day. So preparation, <laughs> as my colleagues have mentioned, is a big one. But also just really, really simple things like most of us, I think, will tend to ask you what you want to start with. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll say, what would you like to start with? So think about that ahead of time. Like, pick one of your pieces that you're really, really comfortable with, you think you sound good on, that makes you feel relaxed, and be ready to start with that. Like, have an answer to that question when we ask it, and you're just going to feel calmer. Um, and even things like, um, if you're a wind player and maybe even a string player, leave your case in the hall. Our students will be around, it will be safe, um, but it can throw you off. If you walk into the room and then you're sort of messing around with your instrument, you, you know, and then the audition's over and there's this awkward period where you're having to put it away, um, <laughs> it just, you will feel more confident. You can just come in, what do you want to start with? You know what you want to start with, you play and, and you sort of own the space and then, um, and then you can leave and there will be our students out in the hall afterwards and they'll be um, ready to, they're equally excited <laughs> to meet you and, and see it all go well. So those are just a couple of ideas. Great. Things that singers and pianists don't yeah. have to worry about, yeah. Casey. <laughs> yeah. Just a water bottle, usually there's a bottle somewhere. <laughs> yes. Dr. Jeremy. Well, I'll finish things up from the um, woodwind and actually maybe just wind generally side of the house. So I also was thinking about what I might say to you and thinking of it in terms of categories, um, audition preparation, the lead up to the audition and then the actual day. So I will underline what, what Dr. Regeer said and Dr. Bulmer has already sort of reinforced and that is preparation. And so um, they've given you some good ideas for what, what that looks like, feeling confident, having performed the entire program that you're bringing to us for somebody more than once. So make your parents sit down, have them listen to you, even without piano, you know, if you're an instrument or a voice that needs, a, 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 you know, some support from, from a pianist, do it without piano if you don't have access to piano. If you can, I even go one step further, and I would venture to guess that probably my colleagues do as well. When I'm preparing for a performance, one of the tools I, I use most is visualization. So I will actually, in addition to playing my program through, I will, I will sit quietly, close my eyes, and then visualize doing it right from walking in the door. So if you know what room your audition is in, 
Um, like Dr. Schiller said, if you're a singer, have a little sing in here. If you know what room your audition is in, try to get a peek into it, you know, before your audition. Like maybe you come here for Shalloway or, or some other activity, right? Go sneak in, see if you can see what the room looks like. And if you know what the room looks like, picture yourself standing outside of it with your instrument in your hand and walking in tuning, you know, go through the whole process. You'll be astonished. The first time you do this, if you haven't ever tried it before, you will get nervous. You will have that same <laughs> adrenaline reaction. And if you do it more than once, the reaction will be a little bit less each time you do it. And then on the day of your audition, when you, when you are actually in the process of doing this, um, your mind has already done it. And so your mind will recognize the feelings of adrenaline, but you've already had a successful performance in your head. And um, so it will feel familiar and more, more comfortable. So that's one of my favorite preparation tools. Um, then on the subject of preparation, this might sound a little bit grumpy, but please prepare the entire audition. So, <laughs> so if your particular instrument asks for scales, please prepare your scales. <laughs> so from the woodwind side, we ask them, um, they, they tell me something, for example, do you know the fingerings all the way up to a high B, right? So I will definitely ask scales, and let's put it this way. Sometimes you can earn money for doing that because all this information we gain, I'll tell you what I mean by that, all this information we gain about you, like, wow, they were so prepared, they sounded awesome, and they were so prepared and they knew every scale I threw at them. Well, guess what? All that information goes into the pot, and then when we're sitting there trying to decide who to give scholarships to, maybe the person who nailed all the scales, they're just a little bit, tiny bit higher on the, you know, the list than someone who didn't. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get in or not, but why don't you give yourself every advantage in the world, right? And also, you'll be ahead then in first year. So if your instrument requires this kind of thing, you know, tackle it, because I view those as almost as important as the pieces. Because frankly, you play me a scale, I can hear if you have a beautiful sound, I can hear if you can articulate, I can hear if you know how to breathe, I can see all of that, I can see all the basics of your playing from that. You know, then I hear you play a lovely piece and I know whether you have, you know, musical ideas and, and instincts and stuff. So I hope that doesn't sound too grumpy, but that, that's, that's one of my uh, other big pieces of advice. And yes, I am very excited to hear people on audition day. It's, really, it's a very exciting day for all, for all of us. Um, on the subject of scores, this will be my last point. Um, if you are a woodwind or a brass player, or certainly if you're a woodwind person, definitely bring the scores. I am all, I'm often um, evaluating auditions of instruments I do not play. So if, it were a if you're a flutist, um, you don't need to hand me a score for any of the flute repertoire you're likely to bring. However, if you're a tuba player, I definitely would like to see the score. And if it's possible, bring a whole score. Not everybody cares about that, but I actually like to see the whole score. That means your pianist's part, your part, everything, because that's the whole music then. It helps me. No, it helps me appreciate everything that you're doing when I have all that information in front of me. So if you're a singer, it doesn't matter, but for, the, for some of us, it, it, uh, it does. Yeah, so good luck, and I hope you enjoy your, your day. Uh, from the piano side, I would reiterate that as well. Um, while those of us that sit on the piano juries know much of the repertoire, that the repertoire is vast. So uh, it always helps to have, have scores for pianists as well, as well as the technical requirements. I would reiterate that for, for pianists as well. All, all scales, major, minor keys, and arpeggios. Yeah. Um, great. Thanks, everyone. Uh, and the visualization uh, technique that, that Dr. Sherry was saying, uh, if you come for the shadow day, if you're not as familiar with the building here, uh, but if you come for the shadow day, that is definitely an opportunity for you to uh, get a, a sneak peek at a room where you'll be playing, because you'll definitely know by then what room you're going to be auditioning in. So you'll be able to see that room, and then you can do uh, the visualization techniques later in the day, and you can actually do it physically on the, the shadow day as well. Yes. Yeah. Can I add a very small comment? Something I meant to mention. Um, for undergraduate and graduate auditions, uh, you'll be able to sing the pieces that you've prepared. We may stop you, and if we stop you and ask you to move on to the next piece, and in both the undergraduate and the graduate auditions, the order is up to you. So you can set the order for your pieces. But if we stop you, please don't think that you've done something wrong. It, we're, all it is, you did something right. We've heard enough of that piece and we're ready to hear the next piece. So if we ask you to sing one verse as opposed to the four strophic verses of Schubert, you know, it's not that you've done something wrong, it's that you've 
done exactly what we needed to here and you've sung exactly what we needed in that piece and we're ready to move on to the next one. Just worth mentioning. Same thing as piano. If you're playing a good concerto, we're not going to hear the whole thing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, great, thanks. <laughs> Any questions from the audience here in the room? Uh, our wonderful Chelsea Walsh has a microphone for you to ask the question. And anybody that's joining by the live stream, uh, please send in some questions. So anybody here, questions? Yep. So Irina from BC said, auditioning for voice. About the original copy's point, can the accompanist use a photocopy given that we bring the original score? As long as there is an original score, yes. I think that's... As long as the original score is in the room. Yes. <laughs> yes, the original score has to accompany the photocopy. So <laughs> as long as the two meet and they're all happy, yes. Good question. Oh, they're quiet. We... No questions? Goodness. <laughs> Um, for the theory placement uh, test, do we still need to take that if we've taken AP theory and earned the credit, or we always have to do the test? Yes, okay. Just do the test. Yep. Okay, <laughs> since Just do the test. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just before you answer that, uh, ask that question, the one exception would be if uh, you're an auditionee who's already a student at the university and will have already completed uh, music 1107. Mm -hmm. That would there might be one or two cases, but that's the only exception to the just take the test rule. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Um, adding on to that question, how do the AP and the IB credits coincide with the music? Uh, can you elaborate on the question? Like, um, like AP music theory that a lot yeah. of us have done and IB music. Mm -hmm. Like, how do the credits um, from that? transfer over. Are you wondering if you get advanced placement credit? For yeah, like just, just, yeah. The, we the, evaluate your skills upon entry and, um, yeah. yeah, and take it from there. And I, I will, I will be honest with you, it's extremely rare for someone to be exempted from core first year theory and uh, oral skills courses. Extremely rare. Our standards are pretty high. <laughs> if you do score a five on the AP theory exam, uh, you will get credit for music 1106. Mm -hmm. Uh, but not 1107. Um, they're getting into technicalities of course numbers. I know you don't know the course numbers, but 1107 is the standard first semester theory course for music students. But you would get credit for 1106, which is a preparatory course, a rudiments course. I mean, it is possible if you come in and write the theory placement test and you really feel that you could be exempted from a semester of theory. I mean, you could always speak with, with Dr. Argentino, our sort of main theory faculty, and I'm, I'm sure he would be happy to devise, uh, you know, a more difficult test to sort of test, test your skills. But our experience generally is that students, even coming out of AP theory programs, just don't quite have the, the depth and the background in part writing and in sort of understanding of the constructions of tonal harmony. Um, we, we go at a, a slightly deeper, sort of deeper level. But it's not to say it wouldn't be, in, it's not, that's not to say it would be impossible. But, yeah. I, I can actually speak from personal experience on that going, mm -hmm. I was a student here some years ago, uh, and I had taken a lot of theory and composition lessons for years before mm -hmm. I came into to, um, the Bachelor of Music program. I did 1107, or whatever the course number was then. Is it still 1107? Still, it was 1107, yeah. Um, and was very thankful that I did. While much of the material was familiar to me, it gave me that opportunity to, to deepen it and to make it so second nature mm -hmm. that when I progressed to the rest of the theory courses, um, things were just uh, a bit easier, I guess, for me, because the foundations were so deep. Really strong. The other thing, too, is think of it this way. Um, if we were too cavalier with exemptions, it might mean that you would get exempted, say, from 1107. Um, but but not getting ex exempted means that you might get like a 90 or a 92, right? Which is awesome for your GPA. And I don't know why I have money on the brain tonight, but guess what your GPA is good for? <laughs> Scholarship money in subsequent years. <laughs> yep. it, I'm not kidding. Yeah. If you have if that if you have that skill set coming into an undergrad, what it means is that you're already that much farther ahead in first year. And even if mm -hmm. you're registered for that first year of theory, as Dr. Sheremy was saying, 
you know, what it means is that you're coming into that course already with a really strong foundation, mm -hmm. which then helps you actually get very, very good grades in that course. Mm -hmm. And um, first year tends to be a difficult year anyway, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of transition. Yeah. So, you know, it's nice to have some coursework that you go, okay, you know what, this feels a little familiar to me, <laughs> rather than having to jump into a second year course in your first year. That's, you know, that's a lot of stress. <laughs> We have another question from online. So this is Sebastian. Sebastian asks, what about percussion and video auditions? I'm concerned with theory, sight reading, and scales. So Se Sebastian is sending in a, a video, uh, auditioning by distance. <clears throat> um, so the audition, uh, the video should include your repertoire, and uh, we will send you a couple of scales to play. Uh, to include in, a, in, a, in that video or a subsequent video. Um, in terms of theory placement and sight singing and piano proficiency, uh, again, if you are successful in your application, uh, in your audition and are admitted to the school, we will administer those tests in, in September during the first week of classes. There's some couple questions up here, I think. Hey there. I just had a question about the piano proficiency exams. Um, is the audition the only time we can take those exams? Okay. No. So your piano proficiency exam, I would really recommend for those, obviously, that are not auditioning for piano, because you are exempt from the <laughs> piano proficiency exam. We assume if you get admitted on piano, you're proficient. Um, we'll make you more proficient. But uh, for those that are not uh, keyboard applicants, so not piano and not organ, um, the piano proficiency exam can be done on the, the audition day, and I would really recommend you, you do it. If you don't pass it, it's, there's no harm done. It's, it's really it's a placement exam. Uh, so give it a go. I guess if you're super stressed about it and, and it's going to take 100 hours between now and March the 2nd, maybe choose to not do it, but if, you know, give it a go. Uh, if you don't pass it then, you have another opportunity to do the same exam in September. Uh, so you would have the summer or the months in between to, to uh, get ready for it. Uh, if you pass it then, great, off, you're off to the races. If you don't pass it then, you will have the opportunity to uh, do it again the next semester, uh, the next September, meaning in your, the beginning of your second year. Uh, if you don't pass it then, we'll have a chat. <laughs> This one there. How much time is allotted for the theory placement test? I think it's an hour, but I'm actually not 100% sure. It's an hour yeah. as well. It's no more than 90 minutes for sure. Right, yeah. Uh, another question from online. This is from Megan. Hi, Megan from Newfoundland, auditioning for piano. I'm wondering what the requirements are for memorization of pieces. That's a very good question. Good question. Um, the tradition for, for pianists is that you play your music from memory, so uh, we would uh, love to see the performances uh, from memory. Um, if you uh, don't feel like you can do it from memory, that's okay. Um, bring your scores uh, and, and play from the scores, uh, but from memory is, is preferable. Uh, some exceptions would be 20th century pieces that are uh, quite complex that pianists wouldn't necessarily memorize anyway. But uh, much of the standard repertoire memorization is preferred, but not required. I would say if you're uh, playing from memory, it does, there are reasons why we play from memory. It's not just to say, oh, look, we can memorize all these notes. <laughs> uh, it frees up your, your uh, musicality. It allows you to, to, to make, let that music breathe and, 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 and make art with it uh, in ways that are constrained by what a page in front of you might not, uh, might not allow. Pardon, uh, so regarding the sight singing uh, examination, right, I was just wondering about like, what level of like, Royal Conservatory um, like, difficulty it was actually like, okay, kind of measured up to, right? Mm. Oh, we'll definitely give you an AICT voice piece to sight. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, totally kidding. The, uh, Dr. Jeremy is an expert in this yeah, area. The RCM uh, syllabus, like if you've done RCM exams, they don't require um, they don't require sight singing the way exactly the way we do. Um, you'll be given first of all. I think there's a piano right here. 
<clears throat> we'll get you set up in a key, something like this. Hopefully with a piano that's better in tune. <laughs> um, so your proctor will set you up in a key and then you'll be um, given a, you know, a melody to look at. And that melody in the first instance will be stepwise within the compass of about a fifth, okay? With skips of a third. And then if you, in a major key. And then if you totally nail that, we give you something a little trickier. Uh, usually something maybe in a minor key with bigger skips. We have a few options we can choose from, sort of depending on how that first one goes. Is that helpful? Very good. About uh, eight measures, four to eight measures, depending on difficulty. <laughs> Um, hi again. Uh, <laughs> will there be a, a set pianist for uh, voice auditions, or will we have to provide our own? I think that there is actually a pianist, uh, collaborative pianist list in the main office. So if you need a collaborative pianist for your audition and you don't have one on your own, one that you usually work with, um, if you give the main office a call, they actually have a list, and there are. They're wonderful pianists, and you should be able to arrange something directly with them. And yes, uh, for voice, we do memorize. So <laughs> yes, yeah, no, that's that's the expectation. I mean, I, I suppose if you bring something really contemporary that you know is not traditionally memorized, you're welcome to do that. But most of the rep, I would say, is will expect. Um, for the piano proficiency exam, will we be given a piece to sight read or should we prepare something? Uh, both. <clears throat> yeah, both. Uh, so there'll be a simple, relatively simple sight reading example uh, given in, in the exam and then bring a prepared piece as well. from a parent perspective. Um, one is, which components of the audition will be taken into account when awarding scholarships? And my second question is, um, for, this, for the sight singing, will they require solfege? The, the second question is, is the easier of the two to answer. Solfege is not required. Um, if the student is comfortable with it, though, by all means, use it. Or um, Movable dough, fixed dough, or a, syllab um, or a number system. Some, some people learn a number system. So whichever is, of those is fine. Yeah. Or on a neutral syllable like law. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the, what's considered for scholarships, uh, the grades, uh, high school grades are, or potentially first year university grades, are important um, because you have to meet minimum scholarship standing to be considered in the first place. So uh, meeting the minimum scholarship standing for Memorial is first and foremost, that's the bar to get above. Uh, once you are above that bar, uh, we look at the audition package that we have. So it would be the, the high school transcript, the grades, the report uh, from the, uh, the jury that heard you, the audition panel that heard the audition. Uh, that's a lot of weight is placed upon that. Uh, and uh, the sight singing is also considered quite quite heavily because that gives a sense of, of general um, musical ability or, or uh, hearing. Mm -hmm. um, less so uh, the theory and not at all the piano proficiency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we, we really look at each file, I guess I think I'm yeah. more or less accurate here in saying that we look at it as holistically. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the, the results of the audition panel and the high school grades are probably the most, yeah. they're most heavily weighted, but sometimes then you've got two or three or four candidates that are quite similar in that, and then we'll go to a, a secondary thing. And we could dig down into the audition panel side of things just a, a little bit more deeply. I think it, it varies tremendously um, in some ways from area to area. So what we, I, I'm, I'm really happy to spill the secrets, you know. So I, I think sometimes students feel they, they're coming, to, you know, musicians, they, they're coming and they meet the audition panel and they think we're the ones that are going to decide if they're in or not. Actually, no, we write our little report and we hand it off to the main office and then there's a committee 
that's made up of faculty members. It's a fairly large committee with people from all areas, and that's the committee that actually makes the decision. So in lots of cases, you know, I, <clears throat> your grades aren't even in the file when I have that folder in, in front of me. Um, so, you know, for example, um, I would venture to guess that in the voice area, like the actual instrument that you have is something they're thinking about. Um, whereas in my area, woodwinds, um, we don't have that um, sort of inherent, the instrument isn't in us, so, <laughs> so we're, we're thinking about, about other things. And you know, different areas have different emphasis on things like technical development. So the woodwinds, like I said, we like to hear that you've actually you know, prepared your major and minor skills to the best of your ability. That might not be the case you know, in other areas, like in piano. I know I, I was a, I actually started my undergraduate degree as a, a piano major, so I had my ARCT when I started university. And I mean, you're not gonna play scales, like you've done that for like the last 10 years, right? <laughs> so, um, so we do hear scales here, uh, but um, for, you know, for, for some pianists, that's like not even something you're really thinking about, and that's gonna be evident at the audition. We're gonna ask you your scales, you're gonna go little four octave scale, and, and so it sort of becomes less an important component in some ways, because it's so clearly you know, second nature. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have anything to add to that? Um, oh, and I should, sorry, Caroline, I was gonna say, so we have comments, and we have a thing at the bottom, system, one to 10. And we have a sheet that, that sort of reminds us where the, you know, what those numbers mean, and we circle the number that we think corresponds to the description of, of what we heard as a package, the musician as a package. Mm -hmm. I don't think there should be any mystery about, about what we're doing. No, no. <laughs> I, uh, how I really, what I really love about the way that we manage auditions here is that the waiting isn't just on one component. Yeah. And um, I've been on uh, you know, other panels in other places where what the student did in one area, be it grades or be it their audition, um, was really the sole decider of whether or not they, they got into the program. And it's not that either of those things aren't incredibly important, but they don't, one of them without the other, it doesn't really give a whole picture of, of the individual. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things that make up a musician. And, you know, and, and there's a lot to learn at music school. It's an amazing place. But you want somebody that is engaged in the whole process. And in order to pick the best somebody that is really ready for that. I, how, what I love about, as I said, how we do it here is, is really looking at your whole file. So, you know, if you didn't have the best day, let's say your audition, you come out and you go, okay, this is all right, but that was not my best. Which, that happens, you know, like, let's be honest. You know, you don't need to walk out and think there is no hope that I will ever get. Do you know what I mean? Because they're going to open that file and they're going to go, oh, look at this. I see a really good musician here. I see a really good student. I see a, a really good brain and a really engaged individual, mm -hmm. which is really wonderful. So I love the fact that we look at the whole file. In, and we will have in voice, we have a little chat with you. Um, we don't have as long as, as we'd like, but, but at least long enough to say hi and, and get a sense of what your goals are, because we really want to know. We think it's really important. Um, I think. <coughs> to, to unveil some more the, the mystery of how, <laughs> how the, for the, the committee, the admissions committee works, I chair the admissions committee. And uh, for every single one of you, we have a folder mm -hmm. and it has everything in it that, we, that you have given to us and that we know about you. We also have a very large Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> very large, which has your, uh, the numerical, the quantitative side of it there. So your high school grade uh, early average would be there. The uh, exact numbers from every audition panel member, not just the average of the panel, but the all three, so in voice there would be three on the panel, so we'll have you know, uh, uh, panel one, panelist one, two, and three, and the different numbers. We'll have the grade for the sightseeing. Everything's on that spreadsheet. But that file also, of course, contains your your own uh, personal statement mm -hmm. that's there. We, we read through those, see what you've said about your yourselves, your past musical experience, your aspirations, that kind of thing. Your teacher reference is there. We read through that. So it's the whole thing that we, we look at very, very deeply. Because, yeah, of course, you could play, you could, you could be a brilliant on your audition day. Um, 
Or actually, it's better to look at it the other way. As Carolyn said, you could have not such a great day, but then your teacher references are exactly. you know, glowing and speak to your, your work ethic and your skill and your devotion and, and all of that. Um, I wanted to say too that you should be reassured that we can hear through nerves. Yes. Yeah. So if you're nervous, uh, after, I mean, we're all quite experienced musicians, and I, I think we, to, we can hear through nerves. So yes. if you're nervous, we know that you know, things are going awry because of that, rather than inherent, than something inherently either unprepared or undeveloped, right? Mm. Can, I, can I jump in, too? We're talking, we're talking all about how we make these admissions mm. decisions and the spreadsheet and, the, <laughs> and all these things. And, and I think it's really important as well to understand that we um, we have an audition process because the program is quite demanding, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that you're prepared to succeed in the program. Yeah. So it's not like we're sort of judging your ultimate ability as musicians. We're trying to assess, are you prepared to, to do well? Um, and so let's pretend that we don't think you're quite there yet. Um, mm -hmm. You could really take that as, as like a not yet. Mm -hmm. And, and we, can, we can help support you if, if you're interested in re-auditioning, if it's something you really wanna do. Um, we're happy to talk to you about that, about how to get prepared to re-audition and get your skills up. So it's really not this like um, final decision about your musicianship. <laughs> it's just kind of like the, the, the program is, is quite demanding. Um, and we really want to see you excel. So that's that's what we're thinking about. That's a really, really good point. Mm -hmm. One of the most common questions, if not the most common question in the admissions committee uh, meetings is, uh, is the student uh, set up to succeed in the program? I mean, that's, that's really what we're looking at, yeah. Um, for the piano proficiency um, test, is there a certain level of exam that we should be playing from or any specific genre? Uh, yeah, if you can play at a, uh, something at a grade five RCM level, that's, that's good, yeah. Just a quick question from online. Uh, this is from Greer. Hi all, I'm auditioning for the Master of Music in Choral Conducting on March 27th. Any idea when I will hear about my repertoire re uh, requirements? Very, very soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for anybody that's um, online that's auditioning for the, um, the Master of Music program in general, because many of the questions and things we've said pertain much more to the undergraduate program. But, so if you're a Master of Music student applicant, uh, please send in your, any questions specifically about that. Um, for the conducting applicants, yeah, so you do your uh, live audition here on March the 27th, uh, and the repertoire selections will be sent to you very soon. Dr. Regeer is on the con instrumental conducting uh, panel. Greer, I think you can, I don't know which camera is going to be, okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> we have two. Hi. Um, I believe that information is sent from the office, but it may also be sent from um, your potential teacher, so in this case, it would be um, prof um, Dr. Martinez. I'm not sure if, if, if he does that, or because sometimes we do things differently between. Um, it would be coordinated. Yeah, well. That would be, so, okay. Um, definitely by next week. Um, Greer, why don't you send an email to uh, myself and I'll make sure it is done for you for next week for sure. <laughs> isutherland at one.ca. I thought you were making a bow there. I, Sutherland, I, Sutherland, I, Sutherland, I will get the rep to you. Yes. <laughs> also, uh, just regarding the piano proficiency test, right, if we should choose not to um, actually go through with it on the audition day and to instead do it at the beginning of the next semester, does that hinder our prioritization for admission in any capacity? No, not at all. So the piano proficiency exam is, is uh, very literally a placement exam. It is a test to see if you... Uh, are prepared to enter the first uh, keyboard, functional keyboard course. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not, you need to prepare and try again. <laughs> yeah. Another online question. This is from Anna Mercer. She says, hi from Coley's Point. Uh, what are the ensemble requirements for first year voice students? The ensemble requirements. 
Um, well, uh, in first year you will take uh, festival choir, which is co-linked with your applied study, with your voice. And one of the things that I love about our program is that there's a lot of opportunity to perform. So you can actually audition from the, for the opera program right from your first year. So you can be in opera all the way through. Um, and that's what a number of students do. So, but there's lots of opportunities. There's choral, there's the choirs, there's, um, and then there are other sort of smaller ensembles as well. If somebody has a particular interest in chamber music, they can start exploring that as well. The requirement, Anna, if your question is really literally about requirement, the requirement is that you have to be in a large ensemble, large ensemble. that is designated as appropriate to your major. So in the case of singers, that can be festival choir, or I believe it can also be chamber choir, Carolyn, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Or opera. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Or opera. So um, in each semester, one of those courses is, is a requirement. Yep. But there are cases mm -hmm. as well where we have, um, so for example, in the wind ensemble, we have a singer in the program who's quite a strong tuba player, mm -hmm. and so she's playing tuba in the wind ensemble, so that, that is... Singers in the jazz ensemble, yeah. because they're singing... Jazz and we have a flute player band. in the chamber choir. I mean, really, so you Topsy see, Derby. requires There's lots of opportunity. There's lots of opportunity. Lots to do. Thank you, everybody, for coming this evening and for also joining us online, whichever camera we're working from now. <laughs> um, we really, really, really look forward to uh, hearing your auditions, whether you're auditioning in Toronto, in Halifax, via distance, uh, or here in St. John's on March the 2nd. Uh, a reminder for those auditioning here on March the 2nd live, uh, if you want to take part in that channel day, which we obviously very much recommend that you do, uh, if you haven't registered to do so, do so uh, as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, we're excited to hear, hear from you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Big theme here, clearly. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Food, everybody. Food. Food. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Lots and then we'll feed you again. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that was a nice exchange.